What's up, friends, and welcome back to the channel. So methylene blue, all of a sudden, it's everywhere. Not because of some new groundbreaking study, but rather because RFK Jr. was recently caught on video casually pouring it into his drink mid-flight. And the internet lost its freaking mind. <laughs> Within hours, that video went completely viral, and suddenly everyone was asking, what even is methylene blue? Well, in today's video, we're gonna dive into all of that. We'll break down the science, separate the facts from the marketing, who should be taking it, who shouldn't, and I'll share a little bit of my own experience, especially as it relates to being an alternative to stimulant medication. So first and foremost, let's talk about what this stuff actually is. Now, historically, methylene blue, it's been around since the 1800s. Originally, it was actually used as a textile dye. Yes, the same stuff that people are putting into their elixirs these days was first used as a color fabric. But at some point along the way, doctors realized that it had some weirdly useful medical properties. And it's actually still being used in hospitals today to treat certain blood conditions when oxygen isn't delivered properly to the body. So that's the history. Fast forward to today, methylene blue has actually found a whole new life in the world of biohacking. Now people are claiming to use it to boost their brain function, increase energy, and even slow aging. And while all of this sounds so amazing and then some, let's take a second to talk about what the science and research actually says. Now, one of the biggest reasons methylene blue is getting so much attention, aside from being part of the Maha movement, is because of its effects on mitochondria, aka those little power plants inside your cells that produce energy. Now, research has seen that methylene blue can actually help these mitochondria work more efficiently. More efficiently means more energy, better oxygen use, and potentially improved focus, memory, and even brain performance. And it's not just brain function. There is some research to suggest that methylene blue also could help make more collagen in the skin, which could equate to potentially fewer wrinkles and even firmer skin. Here's kind of where the rubber hits the road. Most of these studies have been done either in animals or in just very small groups of people. There isn't enough widespread research to say that methylene blue, even though it might help a little bit with brain function and aging, calling it a miracle drug is just, we're not there yet. So anytime you're messing with brain chemistry, of course, you have to think about the risks. And methylene blue, it's no exception to this. The biggest concern actually is too much serotonin. So methylene blue, it actually slows down an enzyme called MAOA, which this helps break down serotonin in the brain. So if you're not on any medications that are actually going to be affecting your serotonin level, it's probably not a big deal taking methylene blue. But if you are, like most of Americans, antidepressants like Prozac or Zoloft, this can get dangerous pretty quickly. So too much serotonin in the brain can lead to serotonin syndrome. Uh, that starts with shivering and sweating, but it can escalate to anything from fever, seizures, even coma. Again, if you're on antidepressants, taking methylene blue, probably something you're not gonna wanna mess with. But beyond that, methylene blue, it comes with a couple of you know classic side effects with things that are more nootropic based, nausea, potential dizziness, headaches. But uh, the most obvious is that it stains everything and turns it blue. <laughs> your tongue, your urine, neon highlighter level blue. Kind of a shock when that happens for the first time, but if you are using something like a trochee as your delivery mechanism, that's going to turn your whole tongue and mouth and maybe even teeth blue. It turned my braces blue back in the day <laughs> because it's dissolving right in your mouth. You can't avoid this. You can just swallow the whole trochee and avoid the whole Smurf mode look. And you'll still get the effects, but definitely uh, you won't get out of the blue pee thing. Sorry, you're gonna have to just deal with that one. <laughs> so I've actually been down the methylene blue road a couple years ago. I've tried it in a lot of different forms, but I think my favorite has to be the trochee form. The Troscriptions, they have this very unique nootropic. It's called blue canatine, and it combines methylene blue with nicotine, caffeine, and CBD. Yes, that sounds like the perfect concoction for somebody who loves dopamine like myself. And I'll be honest, it is probably one of the better nootropics that I've used 
for things like focus and productivity. What I like about it is um, on days when I'm kind of switching off of my stimulant medication, taking it uh, can actually like help turn the brain on. It's not gonna be the caffeine high or the stimulant rush that you might be used to. Really nothing on the market compares to that, but it's, um, it's more like my thoughts feel clearer and I find myself getting distracted less easily. That it also depends on what I'm doing, but you know, regardless, I think it's better than some other things I've taken. And so it has become my go-to alternative from Adderall, especially on weekends, because yes, it does help support those dopamine levels. I can feel it uh, when it comes to being locked in and really motivated, but then it has this like element of CBD that helps keep me calm and focused rather than jittery or anxious. Sometimes if you, you know, are taking stimulant medication, you can feel yourself having a hard time coming down from that and it does affect your sleep. With something like blue canatine, you're not gonna have that adverse side effect. And I really, unless you're taking it too close to bedtime, I haven't had a tough time going to sleep with that. It's not the perfect one-to-one -one replacement for stimulants, but it is probably the closest thing I've found that really does help me get deep work done without relying on Adderall every day. Coming back to the whole marketing side of things, and while yes, you will probably be hearing more about Methylene Blue in the coming weeks, but like anything that blows up seemingly overnight, Methylene Blue is now showing up in so many more supplements, even IV drips, and skincare products. Not entirely sure how that works with the whole staining thing, but all of them are claiming to be the next big breakthrough in anti-aging and brain performance. I mean, the science is very promising, but it's still too early and we don't have enough research to make any sweeping generalizations about those kind of impacts. So I guess, should you take methylene blue? Well, I would say if you're into the biohacking space and you love to experiment with new things and see how they might affect your brain, do your own research and start slow. One of the reasons I like the trochee form is because it's the dosage is very clear. Uh, sometimes with the liquid, it makes it a little bit difficult to know how much you're actually getting. So start small and you can build your way up. But, um, but yeah, I would love to hear what you guys think about Methylene Blue, if you've tried it, how it's helped. I wanna know about the skincare thing. I really gotta look into that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to catch you on the next one.